Hi guys, good morning. In this video, we are going to see the problem number of operations to make network connected. The problem statement is exactly the same as the problem name. Let's see the problem pretty quickly. It's pretty, pretty easy problem. It's marked as medium, but it's easy problem. Very standard, very easy. Let's see. There are n computers numbered from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, cool. Uh, connected with the Ethernet cables in the problem, we will just mark it as or name it as wires. Cool. Uh, connections forming a network where connected connections of i where is just an array element so basically you are you are given a vector kind of a list in which you have multiple lists inside and each list inside a list is actually a connection between a and b which means a wire a ethernet cable between a and b computer cool ai and bi represents a connection between the two computers ai and bi any computer can reach any other computer directly or indirectly through the networks if i have a computer here 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 and if a wire is connected from here to here only and then to here but still i can see i can reach from the computer a which is one to computer four indirectly but still i can reach both are connected via some wires to each other cool uh, you are given an initial computer network called as connections cool uh, you can extract certain cables between two connected co co uh, computers and place them between any pair of disconnected computers to make them directly connected we will see this problem like statement in the example but let's see what other, like other thing says return the minimum number of times you need to do this operation which means removing one cable and adding another cable so it's just one operation that okay you remove one cable extract one cable out of two directly connected components computers and place them to some other computer it's just one operation we just need to minimize this operation and to make all the computers all mark my words all the computers connected and if it is not possible, then return minus one. Let's see example. Like we will not put our brains into it. We will see how this, what the example is saying, how we can see, understand the example, get the thing out of the example. Right. Cool. Let's see. Uh, we have this computer in blue. Okay. Uh, blue uh, zero, one, two. And this another another computer three, which is not connected. So we have to make it connected. So basically you can see this, all these are connected. So we don't have to, to see them. Okay. We just want this computer 3 to get connected to this particular. We can just su suppose as a bunch and we need to connect our computer 3 with that red bunch. Cool. Then we can just add one wire. Right. And it's as simple as that. That we have already this connected. We, it is not connected. We just added one wire and thus we can make everything as connected and we can get this. Cool. Let's see another example. If we have this whole connection of blue. Cool. No worries. Then we have this four computer and this five computer. Cool. It is already connected. So we don't need to look at it, but we can see that four and five are not connected. It should be connected to what? To this thing so that everyone is connected to each other. So what we can do is that we, we can just suppose this as a one bunch or as a one computer itself and it's another computer and it's an, another, another computer so it's one it's two it's three you have given three computers you want to connect them with the wires how many wires are required this is the pink wire which means only two wires are required to connect these three computers i am just supposing it as one computer because it's just one bunch or i can just suppose okay all these are connected. So let's suppose they are the one bunch as a one computer. And now I have to choose two more wires to connect these three computers. So with this, you got to know one thing that to connect some three computers, you need two wires at least two wires. So I can just connect these three with some two wires. Now, my question is, do I have those two wires I needed? Do I have it? Let's see. So basically we grabbed this particular bunch, which already had wires. We just saw, okay, it has four computers. How many wires are actually needed to make it connected to stay, to make it stay connected? These are only three wires needed. It has in total five wires. It needs only three wires. I can grab some two wires from it and just use it in here to actually make this connected. 
So I can use these two wires here and make this connected. You got it? How? It is for computers. It needs only three wires. As I said, n computers to remain connected need only n minus one wires. For sure, right? One computer, two, three. So just one wire and one wire. So basically, wire between those computers. Right? As simple as that. And all will get connected. So it had extra wires which I can use in my whole thing to get others connected. Thus, I need two wires and it is possible to connect it. Cool. So basically, before starting even thinking, we see, we see if it is even possible to connect it or not. If yes, then how many minimum wires are needed? It's a basic thing that, okay, problem says that, okay, all computers, if it is not. So firstly, I see if it is possible or not. If it is not, then minus one. If it is possible, then minimum number of times. Cool. Uh, let's see last example. We had this bunch of blue computers. We had this four. We had this five. Cool. Now what happens is that, okay, it's already connected. We want to connect this four and five. Same as last example. It's, it's connected. It's just, let's suppose there is a one computer. We want to connect it to another two computers. Number of wires required are two because in total computers will be three. One bunch here, one bunch here, one bunch here, one bunch, let's say one computer. So in total wires needed are two. Is it possible? Do we have two wires? Let's see. So basically in this you can see computers are four. Wires required are three. Extra wires are one. Oh, I have only one extra wire, but I needed two wires. Where are they? Mm -hmm. Sorry, man. It's not possible. I needed two wires. I only got one extra wire. Sorry, it's minus one because why were not there. This is the whole thing which we need to see. For having some bunches, what we saw, for having some bunches, we just group them and make it as one computer itself. And to grab that whole bunches, we knew, okay, if I have n computers, I just need n minus one wires. If I had four computers, I needed four minus one wires. If I had these three bunches, or let's say three components in graph, we term is that a component. We just need n minus one, which is three minus one bias, which is two bias. Here's up, here also we saw if we had these three components, we need only two bias. Here also we saw if we had four computers, what we need was only three bias, which is four minus one. So now we can easily see that, okay, if we have n components, one component is this, one, 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 another is this, another is this, another is this. Any a component can have any number of computers, it's just that okay, it's connected. We can just assume it as a one computer itself. So these n component will need n minus one wires to connect, right? We saw in the last example itself, right? Thus, we can just say we at least need n minus one wires to connect them, else it is not going to work because it's not connected to each other. It's one is here, one is here, one is here, one is here. I need to connect all of them, right? So at least I need n minus one wires, which is component where n is the number of components. So I need component minus one wires. So I just for sure know, okay, if it is possible to connect them, then I would need component minus one wires. If it is possible, then I would need at least n minus one, at least n minus one wires, which means component minus one wires. Component minus one wires, I need at least. At least means it is the minimum wires I needed. Cool. But I said, if it is possible, what if it is not? So let's see first place that, okay, if it is possible or not. Let's see if it is actually possible or not. So if we have some N computers, we easily said one thing, right? To connect N computers, we need N minus one wires. Sure. So to connect N computers, we need N minus one wires. So in the beginning itself, I can check. Do I have n minus one wires? If yes, then I am very, very, very good. If the number of wires is less than n minus one, sorry, I need to return a minus one because it's not even possible for every computer to get connected. So if it is not, if it is not, if the number of wires are more than n minus one, see, we saw, okay, to have to connect n computers, we need at least n, n, n minus one wires. If it is, not there, then it's not possible. If it is there, if the wires are n minus one, then we saw, okay, the minimum number of component, at least component minus one wires are required to connect those components. Thus, I can easily return if it is possible. 
to make that comp to make that connected i can just return component minus one virus and that is the whole thing we just have to, to place a condition okay if it is not possible then minus one if it is possible then answer is component minus one virus now to solve it to find the number of components because the answer component minus one virus to find the number of components we have approach of bfs dfs union find people use union find i don't know why because union find is made to optimally determine which component the node belongs to and we are not finding which component the node belongs to we are finding the number of components which means going on node and just checking okay what are components are there number of components so it's for sure that it's the most you know overrated way or kind of like you just go the hard way uh, like it's just a meme in the last video also i showed you guys that having a lamborghini but still you want to ride on a sheep for the fun of it so yeah you didn't find is out of picture although you can implement it but i will not recommend it because it's not the intuitive because you didn't find it was not made to do all this stuff it is kind of for some complex stuff not some very basic stuff now for very basic iteration we have bfs and dfs both are pretty easy pretty simple it's just that a bfs is a bit bigger like the code is a bit bigger you have to write you have to queue like you have to get out of queue push in queue and all that stuff while a dfs is very small just a three line code and you are good to go because both are just iteration on your nodes so it says that either it either you trade by bfs or dfs both are good a dfs is just recursive like recursion so it just helps you do automatically everything for you thus we will use a dfs uh, complexity a time is number of connections because i iterate on every wire to get the number of wires i have to get the to visit every node i have to visit every wire thus it's number of connections and i am storing in my graph i just store every node a connection for every node so it is just a number of nodes which i have in my graph i can just have that as a space complexity let's say very let's see the code pretty quickly it's pretty 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 easy it's just that initially i just had this base condition which i told you if number of wires its connection my connection dot size is number of wires if it is less than n minus one then it is nowhere possible then i can make my whole graph connected return minus one if it is not then firstly make the graph it is done then have this visited to actually visit every node only once because we don't want to visit every node again and again we just want to find number of components and we can visit every node only once then we just have this components variable okay it will let me know number of components so that i can return component minus one as the answer because it is at least component minus one i just need number of wires to make my whole graph connected now when i have all this i just will go on see this loop will go on if i have let's say uh, one component like this, one component like this, one component like this, one component like this. So, firstly, it, it will get visited. A DFS will just visit this. Another DFS, when will happen, is gonna visit everything. So, another DFS. When another DFS is gonna happen, it will visit everything. When another DFS is gonna happen, it will visit everything. So, you know, at every DFS, it just goes on to the every node right thus one component will get visited as a whole in one dfs iteration thus you can easily see that in one dfs iteration one component is gonna iterate as a whole and thus i just added as a component a dfs is very 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 simple as i said it's the shortest code to visit every node of a tree first mark visit it or not then just go on to its child if it is not visited then just visit it as simple as that it's the reason i choose a dfs the codes for c++ python java everything is down below i have just mentioned it and yeah that's all for this video if you guys liked it then do hit the like button and see you in the next video then peace